Welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas. And we are two Swedes and we love Scandinavian design and modern design. We really do. Yeah. And today we're going to talk about a very special chair. Yeah. It is a very small chair with a somewhat unclear history. Guess you've all seen it at auctions, on Instagram and in interior <laughs> magazines. The shape looks like it could be borrowed from an old Donald Duck cartoon. Yeah. It's very organic shape, club-shaped legs and curved armrest, very rounded. Yeah, <laughs> organic. <laughs> organic. And nowadays it's often reupholstered in a white curly sheepskin, mm. almost making it look like a small furry animal. Yeah. I'm of course talking about the clam chair. But yeah. who designed it and when? Yeah, uh, I remember when I uh, first noticed the clam chair. Uh, it was about yeah, 20 years ago, <laughs> yeah, a long time ago, <laughs> uh, when I start, they started showing up at smaller auctions and a lot of people noticed the chair because it was sold for what we at the time considered a lot of money. And it was, I don't really remember, perhaps 500 US dollars or something, <laughs> so at the time a lot of money. <laughs> and since then the price just kept rising. Uh, but no one really knew anything about the chair, not even the country of origin. Mm. Uh, but many wanted to speculate about this, and speculate they did. <laughs> uh, soon the clam chair was attributed to the Danish architect Viggo Boesen, perhaps because of the distant resemblance, I would say, to the easy chair Little Petra. The Lille Petra, <laughs> in Danish, designed by Boesen back in 1938. Uh, but Boesen's chair was produced by skilled cabinet maker A.J. Iversen and is of way higher quality than the clam chair. But nevertheless, uh, the Boesen attribution made the price skyrocket at auctions. Uh, but there was still quite a big problem. Uh, no source could confirm the chair. But then, about 10 years ago, auction firms started attributing the clam chair to Martin Olsen, uh, an, an alleged Norwegian designer. Um, and, and this information came from the Norwegian National Museum and seemed very legit. Um, some shares had been found with a metal plate underneath declaring that the manufacturer was in fact a Norwegian firm called Vik och Blindheim. Um, so many people thought the mystery was solved, but this turned out to be far from true, <laughs> I would say. Um, by some reason, uh, it turned out to be completely impossible to find any information about Martin Olsen. And the reason was both simple and a bit ridiculous, I would say. Um, the thing is, there were never any furniture designer called Martin Olsen. He had never existed. Instead, Martin Olsen turned out to have been a furniture store in Oslo. Uh, so back to square one again. Um, uh, but then in 2013, the Danish auction house uh, Brun Rasmussen finally solved the puzzle. The designer was Philip Arktander, a man hardly known for any furniture designs. But who was this uh, Philip Arktander? There's not a lot of information about the early life of Arktander, but we know he was born in Copenhagen in 1916 and he studied at the Royal Danish Academy of Fine Arts in the 30s. His main field was architecture and in the years before the Second World War he got some commissions in Copenhagen. Parallel to this he also designed furniture, but these are as good as forgotten today. When Denmark got invaded by Germany in 1940, Arktander joined the underground resistance, creating layouts of anti-Nazi posters. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I never seen any of these, just read Neither. about them, but I would really like to see one. <laughs> Very much. In the end of the war, Arktander was captured by the Nazis who sent him to an internment camp near the German border. And this would come to make a huge impact on the young man, and was probably the reason why he stopped designing furniture, but who really knows. 
According to relatives of Aktander, he never wanted to talk about the war and he also rarely mentioned the time before the war. And because of that, there is not much information regarding what furniture he designed in the 30s and 40s. After the war, Aktander started working with urban planning in an effort to make the world a better place. The cities destroyed by bomb raids needed to be rebuilt, rebuilt and it was important to plan them as good as possible. According to Aktander, good city planning could overcome poverty and other social problems. He came to be the director of the Danish Building Research Institute between 47 and 81 and also advertiser to the United Nations on construction and housing issues. Yeah, that was Arctander. But what about this clamshare? <laughs> when was it designed and who did it? Who um, did it? Who manufactured it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the information is quite unsure, but it was probably designed between 1942-43 during this uh, German occupation of Denmark. And it is said to be featured in the design competition arranged by the furniture store Ny Form in 1944. And according to old magazine ads, the manufacturer was a small Copenhagen-based uh, company called uh, Nordisk Stål och Möbel Central, Nordic Steel and Furniture Central. Um, but what about the Norwegian shares marked Vik and Blindheim? Mm. Uh, it is actually confirmed that the Norwegian company bought the rights to produce the share, which means that the Norwegian clamshares are authentic Arctander clamshares. But uh, there are other very similar looking shares on the market, not made in uh, Norway and Denmark. Mm. And what about them? Well, uh, I remember back in 2013, it's hard for a Swede to say <laughs> those is, numbers, yeah. when I worked at the auction house Lauritz in Stockholm. Uh, I was examining a pair of clamshares upholstered in red wool fabric, you can see them here. Uh, and looking underneath uh, the armrest, I found a vague logotype uh, reading Sune Johansson's möbelfabrik i Nässjö. Sune Johansson furniture industry in Nässjö. That's uh, a small city. In, uh, in Småland here, close to where we live. <laughs> and it was quite interesting for me because I come from a small community close to uh, this town of Nässjö. But I had never heard about Sune Johansson. Uh, so I started doing research and I came in contact with uh, one of the sons of Sune Johansson. And he confirmed that his father had in, indeed produced wooden frames for clamshares in the 50s and even in the 60s. And these shares were hardly part of any official production and can't be considered genuine Arctander clam shares. They differ, as you can see, quite a lot from the original, especially the, the shape of the armrest and the prof profile of the back of the share. Okay. And then, of course, also IKEA produced their own version of the clam share. And their share and the sofa Åke, launched in 1953, was highly influenced by the Arctander share. Highly. Yeah, highly. Uh, Åke is more of a wing share, I would say, and uh, has a completely different framework. Uh, and despite this, they are often sold as Philip Arctander at auctions and by design dealers, but that's not true. Um, and then, last... But, but how do you know it? Well, you, a buyer. No, you it, it, it's hard, but you should look at the details, I think, on the shares, especially underneath the share, because the IKEA share has a square-shaped uh, uh, framework, okay. and the real uh, Arctander share has this rounded, organic framework. But actually, the IKEA share is more stable than the <laughs> than our genuine uh, clam share.
But then, last but not least, if you are interested in buying a clamshare, you, you must be aware because there are a lot of new produced fake shares on the market and they can be quite hard to spot because almost all clam shares sold have been renovated and repolstered. So they look almost new. Mm. <laughs> uh, but one tip is to take notice to the details. Look at the wood and the screws and everything like that and ask yourself the question, does they really look old? And if it doesn't look old, then probably it's not a genuine old clamshare because it should be like 50, 60 years old. And I mean, then the wood can't look like it's done yesterday. Good tip. Yeah. And this was our little introduction to the clamshare. Uh, I mean, uh, everyone interested in Scandinavian design have seen the clamshare mm. and some of us loves it, some of us doesn't. And we don't have a clamshare, we won't buy a clamshare either. But it's a nice little share, I think. It is. We say it is. We say it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you learned something new today. I did. Yeah, me too, actually. I often uh, learn yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, if you like uh, Scandinavian des design as much as we do, then you should follow us on Instagram. We call Scandinavian Design 101 and we have daily posts about modern design, not yeah. just Scandinavian design. And if you like this video, please click thumbs up and subscribe. Yeah, and then thanks for watching. Thank you. <laughs>